Welcome to the Wine Math series. My name is Maureen Maroney, and in this video, we'll be going through some calculations for fortification. If you would like to skip the detailed explanation and head straight to an example, you can use the timestamps in the description below to jump to the parts you're interested in. Let's get started. Fortification involves mixing a higher value, such as the alcohol of the spirits, with a lower value, such as the alcohol of the wine, and it requires determining how much of contribution is made by each component. In order to do this calculation, there are five pieces of information involved. There is the alcohol of the wine, the volume of the wine, the alcohol of the spirits, the volume of the spirits, and there is the alcohol of the final blend. So to help think about this, another time where different values contribute in different proportions to a final value is when it comes to grades. For example, if you get a score of 90% on an exam which is worth 75% of your final grade in a class, and you get a score of 65% on a project worth only 25% of your final grade in that class, how would you go about figuring out what your final grade was? In order to do this, we take the score times its proportional weight expressed as a decimal. So 75% translates to 0 0.75. And we add that to the same thing on our second assignment. We have a score of 65 with a proportional weight of 25%, which is expressed as a decimal as 0 0.25. And so again, what this means is that we have a value number one, and then we have a proportional weight assigned to that value. Same thing on our component number two. We have a value which is assigned a proportional weight. Okay, so if we do that math, this looks like 67.5 plus 16.25 equals 83.75. So that is actually your final grade in the class, which is pretty decent. Now, when we talk about wine and fortifying wine, it works very much the same way. So we have a contribution from component number one, which is our wine, and we have a contribution from component number two, which is our spirits, and we have a value with a proportional weight for each component. So in this case, value number one would be the alcohol of the current wine. And its proportional weight would be its percent of final blend. So how much of that final blend does it represent? And then for component number two, uh, our value would be the alcohol of spirits to add, 
and our proportional weight of that component would be the percent of the final blend, which is contributed by the spirits. Okay. But this gets a little bit more complicated because we don't know the total volume of the final blend until we know how much we're adding, which makes it really hard to know what proportion each component represents. So now what do we do? Well, we can figure out our final volume by adding together our current volume plus the volume that we're gonna add. Right, so then if we look at our percentages represented by each component, the percentage of the wine in the final blend is represented by that current volume of wine out of that total up here. So this is over the current volume plus the volume to add, okay? And then similarly with the spirits, that will be the volume of the spirits to add over the total resulting final volume. So the same on the bottom, it's the current volume plus the volume to add, okay? So if we use those to write out our equation, it looks something like this. Now, if we use this to plug in some real winemaking examples, um, let's say that we have a wine where the starting alcohol is 14% alcohol by volume, and we have 50 gallons of it, which means that our total volume is going to be 50 plus something. So we'll mark that with an X. And then let's say that we're going to use some spirits which have an alcohol of 40% alcohol by volume. And again, we don't know how much we're adding, so we'll represent that with an X. And then here on the bottom again, our total volume is going to be 50 plus that X. And we set that equal to our final resulting alcohol in the blend at the end. So let's say that our target resulting alcohol will be 20% ABV. And now if we actually go through and work out this math, I will point out um, that we are of course solving for X and it carries its own units with it. We know that ultimately X is going to be in gallons. So for the sake of simplicity, as I work through this math, I'm going to drop the units and know that the X that we get in the end is in gallons. So if we actually start working through that math, we end up here starting on the left, that 14 as a multiplier ends up in the numerator. So 14 times 50 over 50 plus X plus here on the right hand side, we have the same thing. The 40 moves to the numerator for 40 X over 50 plus X and that equals 20. We do this multiplication here on the left, 14 times 50, 700 over 50 plus X plus 40 X over 50 plus X equals 20. And then here we have two pieces with the same denominator. So we can simply add those together for 700 plus 40 X over 50 plus X equals 20 and we are about out of room so we will move to the next screen 
right where we left off, 700 plus 40x over 50 plus x equals 20. So we continue with um, moving that denominator, um, multiplying both sides by that denominator. So 700 plus 40x equals 20 times 50 plus x. Then we can distribute that 20 as the multiplier. So we have two, uh, rather 700 plus 40x equals 1,000 plus 20x. And then we can subtract 20x from both sides. So 700 plus 20x equals 1,000. Then we subtract 700 from both sides. 20x equals 300. And divide both sides by 20. x equals 300 over 20. x equals 15. OK, so we have solved for x. We knew it was going to be in gallons. So our result is 15 gallons. And what that means is that that is the volume of our spirits to add. in order to hit our target alcohol of 20% in that final blend. Now, that was a lot of algebra, and I realized that most people aren't actually going to set up that equation and then solve for x longhand every time. But the nice thing is that once you know that equation and know the relationships um, between the components, it's really easy to outsource that calculation work to something like an Excel spreadsheet. So it's, um, it's really just about understanding those relationships and, and how to set up that math. Now, let's look at another super quick example. So in this example, we will go back to our original equation up here at the top. But let's assume that we actually know all of our starting materials and how much of each that we're going to use. But we're going to go through and plug them into our equation and calculate that final alcohol in our final blend. So let's say we have a wine that is 12% ABV. We have 300 gallons of it. Then for our spirits, we have 40% uh, ABV and we have 20 gallons of it that we are going to blend into that wine. So we take that equation up here at the top and we just plug in our values. So we end up with 12% times 300 over our total volume of 300 plus 20. That's our component one. And then we add that to our component two. So we have 40% times 20 over that final total volume. And if we go through and do that math, we end up with 12 times 0 0.94 plus 40 times 0 0.06, which works out to 11.28 plus 2.40. And that results in A final ABV of 13.68%. Okay? Thanks for watching this wine math video. If you have any questions regarding the math or the general wine topic covered, feel free to reach out to us at wine at iastate.edu. Check out the other wine math videos to improve your math skills in the cellar. Cheers!